This is rental car number 82, and today I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Armada. So this is a four-door, full-size SUV. It's got a big V8 engine, retails for about $46,000, and it's almost identical to the Infiniti QX80. And I'm pretty serious about that. You can basically swap the Nissan and Infiniti logo on the front of this car, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Regardless, there's a lot of good features on the Armada, so let's jump in by popping the hood and taking a look at what's underneath. So there's not a whole lot of identifying features on this vehicle. The back is blank, so there's no trim level indication on there, and I'm not quite sure if this is the 4x2 or the 4x4 model. So I'm just going to assume that it's the SV and it's a 4x2. If that's true, that means we have a 5.6 liter 32 valve V8 engine, Kicks out about 390 horsepower. It's also got a seven speed automatic transmission. You get that manual shift mode with that. And with all that power, you get some nice gas mileage, especially when you consider this is an enormous vehicle. So your miles per gallon are 14 in the city, 19 on the highway, and you get an enormous 26 gallon fuel tank. All right, so you got a big V8 engine. You got 390 horsepower. What does that mean? Well, car and driver reports you can get zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. I tried that out, and uh, yeah, I didn't make it. It was a lot, lot slower. Uh, maybe I just had a lower trim level, or maybe I just don't drive fast enough. But uh, what I want you to know is that this car is it's a little bit slow. You're pulling around quite a bit of weight, quite a bit of size, so don't expect to be the fastest car on the road. I don't want to be too critical. I mean, you still got a lot of power, so it's fun to drive, but I think where this car really shines is on the interior. So let's jump inside so I can show you all the bells and whistles that come standard with the Armada. So first off, there is a step. I want to mention this because even though I'm six feet tall, it's still kind of a big hop up to get into this car. It really is that big. But thankfully you'll have both hands available because there is keyless entry. Get a nice key fob. It's Nissan's standard model. It's an oval shape with four buttons on the front. Really nothing on the back. It's, it's pretty light, but you know it fits in your pocket pretty nicely, so there's not a whole lot to complain about. And because you have a key fob, it's a push-button start. That's located to the right of the steering wheel, right on the dash. And it's a nice circular button that you can't tell in daylight, but it actually lights up a little bit in a dull red color when the car is on. You also get a nice steering wheel set up with plenty of buttons. What's important on this side is your volume rockers. I really like having those, especially located right here. On the right-hand side, you get your cruise controls, just two buttons, and then a kind of a switch toggle action in the center. And then above the steering wheel, you get a pretty decent gauge cluster, a bunch of nice large dials, and then a small digital display right in the center. There's not a lot of color here. It's basically just black and white. It's not the biggest screen out there, uh, but Nissan's done a good job. There's plenty of screens for you to cycle through, so you can get some pretty good information about the vehicle while you're driving. So above the gauge cluster on the side, you have a number of buttons here. This is your trip reset counter, along with some uh, buttons to adjust the brightness of the display in the gauge cluster. And then on the other side, you have your menu control buttons. I found these to be a little bit difficult to reach. I think maybe the idea is they don't want you cycling through all the menu features while you're driving, but it is kind of a pain in the butt to have to reach to this location if you want to change something while you're on the go. And then to the left of the steering wheel, you're going to get all your standard buttons here. Window controls, door locks, mirror controls, and then up on the dash, you have controls to uh, open and close uh, the hatch. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but down below, you also have a push pedal parking brake. All right, and then going from floor to ceiling, up here you have two bright lights to illuminate the cabin, a pretty big sunglass holder, your standard rear view mirror. It does have your uh, garage door openers built into the mirror itself, garage door opener controls, I should say. And then up top, you have an SOS button. And then on the sides of the vehicle, you have your side view mirrors. Nice big size, no blind side detection here, but even though this is a pretty large vehicle, I really didn't feel like I needed it. All right, I feel like I've been jumping around a lot, so let's go in a much more logical order. 
Let's start off with the touchscreen. It's a nice big size, really nice bright colors, really easy to see. Nissan does a great job with these screens, so you won't be disappointed. It's not the most high tech, so you don't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on this, but there's plenty of apps and things to play around with. And most importantly, I found that I could connect my cell phone to the vehicle via Bluetooth within a matter of seconds. And that's a, a big plus for me. I also like that directly below the screen, there are a bunch of dedicated buttons. This is a big deal because sometimes navigating those menus in the touchscreen is just too much work. It's nice to have a button you can press and just quickly jump to exactly what you want. Then below those controls, you have a bunch more controls, right? You got your volume controls here, the uh, tuner for the radio, some buttons to control the CD player. And then below there, you have your climate controls. All this works great. I had no trouble with it. I just think it could be organized a little bit better. It is kind of hard to find what you're looking for, especially when you're brand new to the vehicle. And then all the way at the bottom of the center console, you have some more buttons to control your heated seats. There's two USB ports and then also a, um, a power port right here in the form of a cigarette lighter, so you will need an adapter. And then behind that area, you have your gear shift. This works great. No complaints here. And then behind there, there's some controls to uh, turn on and off traction control, adjust the car for snow or tow mode. And then you get this big thing in the center, right? This big dial looking thing, but actually it doesn't do anything. It's just for show. So that's disappointing. But what's not disappointing is this little storage area right here. It's perfect for a cell phone. That's where I kept mine. There's also a bunch of other storage spaces. You get this square cutout right here two nice sized cup holders, and then I like this area, actually both areas, because they have lids that close it out and uh, can hide all the messiness that you leave behind. Speaking of messiness, there is a nice big storage space underneath the center armrest, so you can hide all your garbage and crap down in here. I'm a little disappointed there's no USB port in here, but I mean, that's a pretty minor criticism. And then you got your glove box, uh, nothing special here, but it's a nice big storage area that I'm sure you'll find uh, some uses for. All right, so that's all the good stuff in the front seat. Let's jump into the middle row, take a look at what kind of amenities are back here. I just want to point out really quickly that these are cloth seats, but they do have a, some nice cross stitching on there, which I think is a good detail to make it look just a little bit fancier. So legroom back here is great. I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of room, no complaints at all. There's also dedicated climate controls and USB ports on the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers. You can see the climate controls up on the top and then the USB ports are behind these little rubber pieces right here towards the floor. And speaking of the floor, there's also a power port all the way down here, almost at the floor level. Uh, you will need an adapter, but it's, it's a nice feature to have for your passengers. Another thing I liked is there's actually vents all the way down here at the floor underneath the front seats. And there's also vents up above the windows. So I'm assuming your passengers will be able to regulate the temperature pretty well back here. And there's also a center armrest. It folds out of the middle seat and there's two cup holders hidden away right here in this small storage area. The center row seats also collapse forward. You just have to pull up on this small plastic piece and the seat folds away all by itself. And then uh, it reveals a, a kind of a small area, but big enough for me at least, to access the third row. So I did climb in and sit back here for a little while. The seats are fairly comfortable, but there's just not a whole lot of space back here. So don't expect to have adults sit back here for any length of time. All right, so that's the third row. Let's open up the hatch and take a look at what kind of storage space the Armada has to offer. Now, this is what the vehicle looks like with those third row seats up so someone can sit in them. And I think you'll notice there's plenty of room back here for still some groceries. Not a ton of space, but I think it's good enough. You probably can't tell this, but there's actually a floor mat laid down. And if you lift that floor mat up, there's a small storage space underneath. Not a ton of room, but enough for a couple of tools and your owner's manual. And then probably the best feature back here is the electronic controls for the third row seats. Now, I'm not going to speed this up in any way because I want to show you just how slow it is to operate these electronic controls. I'm just going to be quiet for a second and let you watch. Like for real, this is just way too slow for me. I kind of wish the Armada just had 
you know, manual controls, just a little switch you can pull to let those things fall forward. But they don't. So, good or bad, this is what you get. So as long as you're patient enough to fold down those seats, then you really can take advantage of the full amount of room you have in the Armada. You really can see that here, where I've folded down the third row seats and also collapsed forward the middle row seats to reveal the whole storage space. Anyway, this is just my long-winded way of saying there's a lot of room in the back of the Armada. All right, so that's pretty much it, front to end. Uh, I drove the Armada for two days, put about 170 miles on it. Uh, I think I got a good amount of time in this vehicle where I can sort of give you a recommendation. And that's really what you should be asking me, right? Would I recommend this vehicle to you? Yes or no? No, I'm sorry. I mean, I really do like large SUVs and I really do like Nissans, but this one, it just doesn't do it for me. I don't know what's missing, can't really put my finger on it, but I really wouldn't recommend that you rent this vehicle and I certainly won't be asking for it next time. But that's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what I missed so that I can do a better job next time. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time when I review my 83rd rental car. That'll be the 2018 Chevy Impala. I'll see you then.